Hey, Jen. How's it going? So, this is Katrina. And uh, the thing is, uh, Taylor is divorcing me and getting no contact, domestic violence restraining order against me and preventing me from seeing my son when I never committed an act of domestic violence. She actually was my domestic violence abuser, but I don't really care. I'm not saying that she's a bad mother. If I had O.J. Simpson's legal team, I wouldn't take custody of Israel more than 50-50. But she's acting like I'm some kind of a fucking psycho killer. And that's just not the case. Just because we, yeah, so Taylor is the one who is under attack. And I'm under attack from Taylor trying to take my fucking son because she's more concerned about the way of the world. She stopped going to church. She stopped praying. She started being contentious. And she left me, divorced me, sent me a stack of papers like seven fucking reams high to take my son from me. And then Katrina shows up with the same kind of trauma that I have. Having actually been in a relationship with a domestic violence abuser. Spousal rape, coercion, you know, all the nine yards. She endured the same thing that Taylor alleges that I do. For six years. For six years. And has had a string of bad luck with romance ever since. Mm -hmm. Just like me, I got her her million dollar house, her little dollhouse dream house. And uh, check it out. When she left that house, you know what I did? Moved in three homeless dope fiends from the fucking street who would not have had a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out if it would have died on those streets. Never got clean. Guess what? They're not getting loaded. They have housing. Just like you guys did with the lighthouse. And they do chores. And they do chores. And they clean up. And they're doing well. And they're going to treatment. They're going to programs. I didn't have to go get funding. I didn't have to ask for money. I didn't have to have the big old thing that the lighthouse does. I didn't have to fucking tell anybody about it either. Because I'm just doing it. I'm too busy for the left hand to know what the right hand is doing. And I know that God will not bless me if I care about my status among men. Because I don't. And guess what? If you really think that I'm that far off the fucking plot and that far off the map... Ask Eric Blauer, the pastor of Jacob's Well Church, and uh, uh, Dave Wilkinson, who is the pastor of the porch, both of whom caused my church trauma, and ask them why, you know, they prayed and meditated for a while, and I, I went to lunch with Eric, and uh, for several hours we talked, and uh, he asked me for all the context and all the pieces and all the posts and put the whole thing together, pray over it. And uh, he gave the best sermon of his fucking life, man, talking about how everybody says that, uh, you know, Peter was the rock upon which the church was founded. No, no, Jesus gave him the keys to the kingdom. And the first thing he did was try to lock Jesus up. But Jesus said, I have to go you know, pretty much do this whole like die of the cross martyr thing. Right. And so Eric was fully aware of the fact that I was having a extramarital affair because my wife divorced she she divorced me Jan she left me and divorced me and there was a psycho fucking domestic violence raper abuser of women guy who told me that he was going to destroy my wife and my son with the power of Odin something like that yeah and uh so Eric Blauer saw that and Dave did and uh he gave this sermon about the keys. He's throwing keys on the ground. He's talking about like, oh, oh, that's a children's ministry. That's a men's recovery house. That's a whatever, whatever, right? And so knowing that I'm living in sin, sinny, sin, sin, the darn dirty devil, Janice Boland, has me living in sinny, sin, sin with this woman who's more my partner and more my wife than either of the two women I ever fucking married. Well, what did Eric give you, love? I think you're a disturbance off, Jan. I love you. If you want to come by my men's recovery house, that uh, also could have women, too. I'm, I'm trying to get a woman who has a daughter who, like, I, I've been trying to get her to want to stay there, too. Because I'm out here healing souls. Well, not me. I mean, Jesus is the one doing the work, but I, he's the one who's telling me, oh, yeah, that guy, you need to go talk to him. Go pick him up off the streets and take him home. And I did that. And uh, what is that? Isaiah 58, you shall be uh, called repairer of the breach, restored streets to dwell within. Do you remember when I was a hobo and I hit you with that verse? 
That verse was Old Testament shit. Isaiah, Revelation type shit, right? You know, like old school, Old Testament prophet. That's my life. That's my ministry. And I don't want to be on the mission field. I don't want to be a civil rights case. I don't want to be autistic and have that be the 2% of people in the world who have the worst social determinants of health. That they're nine times more likely to die by suicide. 88% more likely to have be unemployed, underemployed. Uh, uh, 90% have severe mental health issues and an average life expectancy of 54 years. My son's autistic. So when Northwest Christian Schools filed a CBS complaint because I advocated for my autistic son and they're required to comply with that under Title Three of ADA, and you're a teacher, Jan, you know about the IDEA Acts of 504s? So a, a private school, a religious school, is not required to follow... 504, but they still have to follow Title Three of the ADA. And Lyndon Smithson, the prosecutor, prosecuted all my cases. Uh, Katrina, we went out to, to brunch with him the other day, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's, he's a pretty great. pleasant, good, nice guy, right? Yeah. yeah. He listened to you talk a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, because I talk a lot, a lot, because I'm autistic and I'm from the internet. Oh, wow. He's very nice and patient about it. Yeah, he was. And uh, I make a quarter million dollars a year so I could just afford to do this without fucking having to go out and get money or ask for handouts because what the fuck else am I going to do with this million dollar five bedroom house? Just sit there alone in my sadness when I could go out and fucking do the things that would make Jesus' butt tingle? Right? Yeah. So, you know, what's funny is that I've been fighting epic spiritual warfare my whole fucking life. There was spiritual warfare in my home. As a child, growing up, when I did not have a voice or choice. And now, Katrina and I, we are the ministry defined in Isaiah 58. Not because we're good or better than anybody else. It's just when God places a calling upon your life, he doesn't just call the equipped. He equips the called. And if those men can decide... That, oh, our contemporary evangelical Christian values. Oh, no, you're living a thinny, thin, thin. Well, she's the one who divorced me, dude. Like, Taylor divorced me. Katrina showed up in my house. I was never going to be... I, I was going to die alone with a cat, man. I was never going to get in a relationship again. For it, the record, I was not looking for a relationship. Either. She wasn't... Yeah, th this was a thing where it only happened because... She had the same abuse and trauma in her life as I had in my life. And we were like, are we the same person? It wasn't just like, oh, you're cute. I'm into you. No, it was like, we are the same fucking person. We got these tattoos. Like, this is Romans 6.23 Hebrew. Uh, that was about the same year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what did that mean to you, love? For me, this was not long after my divorce. What year is that? Oh, what year was it? Yeah. It was 2015, 14, 2014. Okay. 2014. I got this tattoo. Uh, uh, it would have been 2009? Two, two, yeah, 2008. So I got this a lot before she did. But it meant the same thing as when I was going through a divorce and I was actually the domestic violence abuser in my first marriage. But not because I was a mean dude. I was just a mean drunk and I couldn't keep my shit together. And when I called my ex-wife when Taylor and I wanted to get married at the porch, which was magical and amazing, um, uh, I called my you know, ex-wife, Courtney. And you know, she said to me, was, you know what, Philip? I'm sure that you feel pretty bad by the way that things went down. And you were not an amazing husband, but you sure were a hell of a lot better than the guy married after you, who was a real, like piece of work because you were just an addict you were drunk you didn't know better and when you were not wasted or fucking off the bills or whatever or just didn't come home because you're always at the bar you were all right man and um uh katrina when did you go to new zealand <laughs> so i got this tattoo um as a reminder, it means happiness in Japanese. And I did ask someone who was Japanese to verify that for <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it means happiness, and I made it face myself. So that was a personal reminder that I am responsible for my happiness, 
no one else can give that to me or take it away from me. It's my reaction. It's me. And so it's a reminder that if I'm ever not happy, I'm the one who needs to make a change. And this was, oh, so that's your left wrist, right, love? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can you hold up again? Yeah. So why do we have a tattoo that we got to remind ourselves to, one, not to sin because, uh, you know, the wages of sin is death, the reward for obedience of life everlasting. That's even before I came to faith, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you got one to remind you that you are in charge of making your own happiness. When do you go to New Zealand? So it was a year after this tattoo, and it was mm -hmm. 2015? 2015. To when 2016. Did, when did I go on my bike ride to California? Was that 2015 to 2016? Where she went backpacking through New Zealand for a year. By myself. By herself. I, I rode a reason than a soul searching by myself mission. I rode a bicycle from Spokane to California by myself for no other reason than a soul searching mission. Hmm. This is fate, synchronicity, providence with a capital P, ordained by God. Before we were born. I wouldn't have believed it unless I was living it. I would have believed it unless I was living it because my life was on fire. It was a nightmare. It was Same. everything I'd ever built had burned to the fucking ground in an instant. I didn't get loaded. I didn't make any mistakes. But just like Captain Picard says, man, sometimes in life you can commit no mistakes and still lose. This is not weakness. This is life. So the thing is, I adore Taylor. I worship Taylor before... She tried to take my kid, and she left, and I wept like Jesus. I wept, and she came back, and I was like, hey. So, like, obviously, we're not working out as a marital couple, and you can get a divorce. I'll give you one, but, like, we don't have to be grindy. We don't have to be rude or whatever. Like, literally, if I just change the locks of the upstairs apartment... And you don't have a key to it because you're not a safe person for me because you are my domestic violence abuser. You yell and scream at me until I have an autistic meltdown, which is not anger. It's not an anger management issue. It's literally the same reason that Israel had a meltdown at school and they were abusing him by making him have meltdowns, by not respecting him, by not calling out transitions. And so when I advocated for that for Israel, which they've been doing just fine for over a year, but all their staff quit at the same time, so that all brand new staff. You know what that means when everybody quits at the same time, right? Something's rotten in Denmark. So, like, then they're calling me up after I had, like, a year of messages. Like, oh, your kid's so fucking cute. He's so adorable. We read a book under the tree, right? And it's like, oh, your kid's an asshole. Come fucking pick him up. Huh. So, Jan, uh, I, I'm sure it's been a lot of years since you've been in a statistics class, but I'm sure that you remember, you know, how it works in the sense of a distribution, and the closer that the variable n is to 1, uh, the more likely that there's, like, a correlation, right? And, and correlation does not necessarily imply causation, but when n equals 1.0, it's pretty fucking fair to posit that this was retaliation for making an ADA claim. And guess what? Uh, my, all my lawyer friends, mm -hmm. all of them, judges, I mean, prosecutors, Lynn is a prosecutor. Buddy Matt is a, a former judge. You know, I talked to my friend Lisa you know, about business formation stuff. You know, they're all like, yeah, you got him dead to rights. The most drunk ambulance chaser six months out of law school. we get a seven figure settlement out of those fucks with those facts. Because. The church trauma that they inflicted was a thousand. The Taylor, made by domestic violence abuser, utilizing my child to coerce my behavior and try to manipulate me into giving her what she wanted and be less weird. Autistic tech bro makes a quarter million dollars a year in a million dollar house and fifty thousand dollar BMW. Stop being so fucking weird. You were making me embarrassed. So I have to go pick up my kid when they're abusing our kid at the fucking school. Oh, cool, dude. You were the one. Who, she was the one who went and filed for divorce. She was the one who said I should have a domestic violence protection order. I've never committed domestic violence. At least not since I quit drinking. How long ago was that? That was uh, October uh, 16th, 2015. Oh, 
Dave Russ's is, was was in October as well. That painting. Yeah. Yeah, Russ got sober enough. Yeah, well, you know Russ from uh, Off Broadway, or sorry, uh, uh, Family Faith. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what were we just discussing? That he has a terminal illness and, oh and a life care? Oh, yeah, Jan knows Danny Green and oh Sherry and all that. Yeah, Jan's at fucking there all the time. Yeah. Yeah, whoa, whoa. Yeah, Russell Patrick. Yeah. He is not my stepdad, but was a father figure. He and my mom dated for a while back when I was in junior high and high school. And he has been sober for 12 years. I just went to his coin night back in November. Um, and, um, yeah, sober 12 years. And um, it's amazing. And he's totally on fire for God. And he's totally trying to do all these amazing things. But if you know him in that church, he's terminally ill with a lung disease. And nobody was willing to quit their job to... Uh... Go fucking take care of him because it needed to be two caretakers for him to get the lung surgery that yeah. might prolong his life. Mm -hmm. Katrina was the only person willing to do it. She was willing to quit her job mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. And go live with him in his really go cluttered, live with him cluttered house. Yeah. His very cluttered house because yeah. she would not have been able to afford her apartment. Yeah. But now, because I have all this money, I'm starting a behavioral <laughs> health agency. Katrina can go over there whenever she wants, bring one or two of the guys with her. And maybe he could get this life prolonging surgery. I really hope so. I hope so too. That's our prayers. I, I hope really that Jan, hope so. yeah, I hope that Jan joins us in that prayer. That so, uh, the fruit on Taylor's tree, barren. She's just sitting there mad at me, like, oh my God, I'm going to be a single mother at 30. When I told her, I was like, little girl, you need to go wander. You need to go live somewhere else. You need to go do your own thing. Go backpack through Europe or something. And that was like six weeks before I met her. Yeah, you need to hook up with a stranger. You know, increase your body count. Go live a little bit. Jesus doesn't care how many fucking sexual partners you have, dude. If I with could do all the things I did in my sin and my acts of addiction and God blesses me the way that he does... I sending her to my house where her life is completely transformed and my life is completely transformed in the aftermath of the most vicarious and lingering and lifetime of trauma dramatic events that we've had. And there's even the signs and the wonders. And we grew up 10 miles within a 10 mile radius of each other. She's 35, I'm 38. And um, uh, yeah, I had the same type of upbringing, same sorts of traumas. And like, Taylor didn't. So the whole thing, I've been, autistic. yeah, she, yeah, she's autistic too. Yeah. So it's like the first time either of us have been in a relationship where we have another person who's autistic. We get along great. We have zero conflicts. Taylor and I from day one had a fuck load of conflicts, not because she's a bad person, not because of character defects, but because autism spectrum disorder, which actually isn't really a disorder, people who are autistic communicate just fine. And people who are autistic, people who are allistic or, you know, normies don't have autism cognition, communicate just fine with each other. The problem is when they communicate between the two of them. So it was classified as a disorder with autistic people impairing social communication. But new research has it's indicated... It's just biodiversity. It's just biodiversity. It's just evolution, you know? And uh, society tends to hammer down the nail that sticks out a little bit. Almost every autistic person I know has experienced that fucking trauma. So, Jan, I'm sorry that your cookie-cutter perfect life where you are out there, like, you know, the, the freaking uh, uh, Mother Mary of Spokane, out doing the best that you can with what you got, that's great, man. But you can't empathize with where we've been at and what we're going through. Neither could Taylor. And I told Taylor a million times, uh, you would be happier with a man who's not autistic. I could give you 2% of what uh, most men never fucking could. But 98% of what you want and 98% of the things that you need to feel okay are things that are social cues and context that I can't, because of my disability, even fucking understand. But her and I communicate perfectly to the point where we have not even had... We, we haven't even had a negative interaction, let alone an argument or a spat. And the two of us who have been, you know, through sexual abuse and trauma, I, I've had like six different women try to coerce, rape, fucking whatever me. Um, and the same sort of thing. And we feel safe with each other and never felt safe with anybody else ever. 
So, Jan, I love you. You can come by, check out the place, meet some of the guys that, you know, I picked off the street just by looking at them. And God's like, yep, that one. And uh, it's... Also a side note. Also a side note. When I met Phil, I would say agnostic is the closest, best thing to describe me. I have a lot of church trauma of my own, similar to what he's described about Taylor. And um, that's part of why I stayed in my marriage with an abusive ex-husband as long as I did. And (laughs) I... It's really, really hard to stay in that marriage. And I tried going back to our church and going through counseling with him, and he wouldn't go. And I tried talking to his parents, who are really involved in the church. You probably know them if you've been around in Spokane and in that in that world. But um, I I wouldn't believe any of this if I wasn't living it. And it's very, very, very hard to believe that it's coincidence, especially with oh, me just I, realizing yeah. that Russ might be okay. I don't think it, there's a possibility <laughs> it's a coincidence. Because we're out here doing what we can with what we've got. I just realized that about Russ 30 minutes. Yeah, like 30 minutes ago. Right yeah. before he started recording this. Mm-hmm. And I'm just recording this, Jan, because like I'm not mad at Taylor. It's not her fault. She herself, when, after I wept like Jesus, she came back upstairs. I was like, hey, you could stay here, and we don't have to waste a whole bunch of money on attorneys or whatever. We could just agree that I keep the upstairs apartment. You can do whatever. You can move whoever you want in. You know, like you can date. I don't care. You know, like, uh, we, we can, we can, thank you, love. See? Yeah, Taylor's never done that because she's not autistic and doesn't know that your back becomes a curly cue. She also comes up and feeds me tea and water all the time because if uh, she didn't do that, she wouldn't stay hydrated and be okay. It's not because Taylor's not an amazing, remarkable woman. She is. She just needs to fix her codependency stuff, and you can't do that when you're in a relationship with people. But she's just running towards a relationship with people because she's codependent. She even said it herself. She said, Philip, I need you to move out because that will set off my codependency and it'll drive me nuts. I'm like, that's why the lock is on the door. You can't come up without an invitation. I can just ignore my phone, right? And she's like, no, you have to move out. So she expects me to pay the $3,600 a month mortgage, go get my own place. And what do I get out of that exactly? Wasn't she trying to squander my son's inheritance? Because she, she can't afford that mortgage. She makes $50,000 a year. It's a $700,000 mortgage. She can't afford that. She doesn't even make that. Like, she would not get approved on a mortgage because that's all she makes a fucking month. So, with me... You know, I was fine just being like, hey, I'll keep the fort down. And if you want to move out, do your own thing, cool, whatever. You know, uh, here, we ha- we'll we keep the joint checking account. And I put $10,000 in that joint checking account. So she could go buy whatever she needed or whatever. And I only yanked it out when she fucking hit me with this lawsuit to take my con- son, zero contacts. Like, she's trying to steal my son, Jan. I would never do that to her. If I had OJ's legal team, she would get 50-50 custody. I would not have any concerns about Israel in her care. And she had zero concerns about Israel in my care one month before this whole thing went down when she was in Hawaii with her sister for a week and a half. Israel and I were just fine. On February 12th, my birthday, Amber came over. Mm. And Taylor and Amber and I and Miguel, and that was it, I think. Or my mom. You know, we we just had some steaks, and we made some music. We had a good time. It was fun. It was great. But then this lady called CPS and said, Fuck Phil, he's a domestic violence abuser. I don't care about my reputation. I don't care, because I'm a man of God, Jan. I've led a basically apostolic life. And Taylor stopped being my wife when PTSD and the trauma from Israel's birth caused her to look at me as an enemy. Um, And I've been her caretaker ever since. I've just been providing and protecting and a co-parent. And I told her, she's just so miserable with me. I'm like, God, you fucking hate me, dude. Why don't you just leave? Like, I 
am not going anywhere, dude. And the thing is, I don't want to have sex with you anyways. So, like, why don't you just go move out? And I'll pay for you to get a fucking apartment. And you can just get a divorce. And, you know, we can just split. Like, you could go do your thing and leave Israel with me. And then when I want to go do something, I'll leave Israel with you. We don't have to be, like, weird about it. Obviously, our marriage is not working out. But we're going to have to raise this child for the rest of our fucking lives. Yeah, that's what responsible adults do. That's what my friend uh, uh, Jim uh, and and uh, his... Uh, I'm just forgetting her name right now because I'm so amplified. Uh, yeah, Jim and Kim. Yeah, Kim and Jim. Uh, they're, they adopted a shitload of kids. They're in their 50s. I think Jim's 60 now almost. God, you're old Jim if you ever watch this. <laughs> Love you. But like they adopted like four or five kids. And they never did that when they got divorced. And they were married way the fuck longer than Taylor and I ever were. Because they know, oh, if you get lawyers involved, all you're doing is hurting the kid. Because they don't know. They don't get it. I never would deprive Taylor of seeing Israel. But I never would... Like, I forgave her for what she did, but it was a line that I'm not going to allow her to continue to be my spouse and continue to take my money and manipulate, coerce, and control me into compliance with my kid. Well, there's nothing wrong with what I did except for the fact that she just didn't fucking like me and she didn't trust me. When a woman who's been through what she's alleging I am for most of her life Thinks I'm the only person, only man in the world she's ever been able to trust has been what, 16 days? 15 days? 16. 16. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I'm keeping track. Mm -hmm. 16 days. More my partner than anybody else has ever been. Not because I have not been with good women. And Taylor is an amazing woman. I adore her. I would die to save her discomfort, in fact. I kind of literally did. And some weirdo said he's going to, like, destroy her and Israel with the power of Odin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going to go along and take him out, not out of vengeance or jealousy. To protect. To protect, because he was a prison sociopath, dude, like six restraining orders and a rap sheet 10 miles long. And I was not going to allow my son and my wife, even though she wanted to leave me and she wanted a divorce, I wasn't going to allow them to experience that. Hey, uh, has somebody struck the head off that stake before they got to you? How much pain and suffering would that have saved you? I wouldn't be here with you now. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I know, but... I mean, I we started dating at age 16. Mm-hmm. It was 16 to 27. A lot of my life, and I am still getting over those scars. Yeah. So, um, maybe, Jan, just maybe, your discernment is a little off here. And I would never ask you to talk to Taylor on my behalf. I do continually pray for Taylor's safety, though. I know that my son is safe with Taylor, but Taylor is not safe with Taylor. The only thing that makes me sad about this whole situation is that I know from seeing other people go through these types of things that this is all hurting Taylor, even though... I mean, she was given an opportunity to go down another path, but I, I, I get it. I've seen it. But she sounds like a super cool person. She is and an amazing person. She's a, I, I married her. I adore her. She has nothing but amazing things to say about her. She's and incredible. I have a similar relationship where I have amazing things to say about the person. They're fantastic. But they're not for me. They stress me out so bad. Life is too it's, short to be with somebody who trauma. does not treat you with respect. So. And, and Taylor... And I were contentious even before Israel was born, but we managed to get around it because we were like in love and we could just go like touch and have sex and cuddle and make work through things, right? We hadn't had that in our relationship for over half of it. And that sucks, but you know what? I hung on to the very last second until those divorce papers at my door and I was planning on dying alone with a rescue cat until she showed up at my door, gift wrapped like a present from Jesus. And I was so desperate to find somebody who was like me. I didn't know that meant being autistic at the time, that I was ready to join a dating site. 
Yeah, and she and that scares the hell out of me. And she really, really she does. saw me. Everybody saw me. You need to stop posting online. You're gonna kill your custody lawsuit. I'm like, you know what? It's more important to be seen, to be truly seen, than anything else. So here I am. I don't go on Facebook very often. She doesn't hardly go on Facebook at all. A week, and if she did not see me crying out for help, being like, hey, my life is on fire, and I wish somebody just fucking play video games with me. Thank you, baby. Oh, God. I was, oh, that was going to hurt. So, yeah, here we are. We're a half hour in. So, Janice Fulland, I love you. You're a strong woman in Christ. I don't know anybody else who's had as many miraculous fucking healings as you have from terminal illnesses. That's oh, some that's some cool shit. Have you talked to Russ? <laughs> I, I I'm just saying, hey, Russ, why have you beat, dude? I'm gonna meet Russ. I look oh, forward to meeting him. But like I Jan, get to meet you, Jan. Oh, uh, maybe we, I already have. We can we can we can go to, we can go to off Broadway Family Outreach on Monday. She'll be there. Okay. Maybe she'll have had time to watch this half hour video. And I Taylor is saying all kinds of hateful shit about me. All I'm saying is. Little girl is headed for a lot of trouble if she doesn't work through her shit and tries to go find a man instead of letting what happened to me where God sent one because they were ready, I was ready, and it was a good thing. So being concerned about the ways of the world instead of the ways of the spirit, like, I, I thought I was going to die alone. She thought she was going to die alone. She, I wanted a cat. She didn't even want fucking a cat. I and have plants. About I barely want my plants. I spent so much time taking care of my ex-husband, the, like, six-foot man-child. Like, he didn't work most of the time we were married. And he was abusive and... Oh, just so and many I say awful, that, awful, awful, awful things. Well, anyway, it has traumatized me to the point where I have definitely not wanted children because couldn't find the right partner. I don't want pets because I don't want to be tied down. I don't want responsibilities because he sapped all that energy from me. And Taylor sapped all my energy, not on purpose. She just couldn't ever relate to me because she, and it's not even but like. I love children, side note. <laughs> right? So. Same. Same. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, that's why I worked at Excelsior for two years as a peer support, advocating for children and needing special support to schools, IEPs, 504s, uh, ADA accommodations. I did that for over 40 hours a week for two years of my life with hundreds of kids and dozens of schools, over 5,000 hours of my life. Nobody called CPS on me once. Uh, Israel is four and a third right now. No daycare provider ever called CPS on me. Until I had one lady who thought I was mansplaining and Taylor packed up the child and ran and is getting a divorce and trying to take me for $4,000 a month in alimony when my net pay, because I'm paid, I'm compensated mostly in equity. My net pay, my gross is one fifty, but net with all the insurance and tax and benefits and you know, all that shit. I only make 6,500 a month only make. That's plenty. That's adequate for me to run this whole recovery house thing. Almost three times as much. As yeah, no, it's almost three times. But you're, we'll get you there. Uh, yeah. And the thing is, Taylor's asking for four thousand dollars a month in spousal support and alimony, and then it'd be like two hundred dollars per week for supervised visits for one hour that I have to phase up through. Not only would I refuse to do that because that's fucking bullshit. Uh, two. I cannot service the mortgage with my salary that her fucking name is on at that amount. So it's really pretty fucking stupid to come out the gate asking for that. It but that's... Really, I work for a credit union. That's a terrible idea to hurt your credit that way. Yeah, that's just what lawyers do. Because uh, in family law, they shoot the petitioner and the respondent and the kids in the face fucking twice. That's why it makes so much money. And that's why how most ethical attorneys... There are a few gems, a few diamonds in the rough, but most of them don't go there. It's just the people who want to sit back and collect the wealth and, you know, make a fortune off people's suffering. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hey, Jan, hopefully I'm going to wrap this up here. We love you, and uh, we'd love to see you on Monday off Broadway. We're going to go there. So, uh, hopefully you're I'm receptive to this. Hey, if you have to take care of your mom, then we'll wait until another Monday when you're not my taking care of your mom. My mom just had surgery on Wednesday for a cyst on her brain. And Phil's been a huge help helping me get family medical leave. So mm -hmm. I can take care of her on Monday. 
Yeah, and uh, helping her upgrade her career and teaching her how to do startups and entrepreneurship with this recovery house that I'm trying to do a peer-run organization for so I can build Medicaid and collect hen, you know, housing essential needs vouchers for these dudes to get paid with a lease agreement and a corporation because that can't be garnished because Taylor fucking lawyered up and is trying to come after all my money which would destroy her son's inheritance, would destroy me, my ability to do my job. And if she got that, because I'm such a crazy person, let me get, if she got that, I would make less money than somebody working at McDonald's 40 hours a week. When I'm a senior strategic support engineer at one of the most influential and top tier technology companies in the world. I love you, Jan. But you're off the mark. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.